Now we're going to move on to our third and final speaker, who is Alyssa Van Diemen. Personal finances are of interest to Alyssa Van Diemen. She took Dave Ramsey's course, Finance Peace University, in 2015 and became debt free in 2017 with her last student loan payment. She still puts the principles into practice today. Will you want to be a millionaire in the making? After hearing Alisa speak, you bet your bottom dollar. Tonight, becoming a millionaire in three easy steps. I ask you to welcome our speaker, Alisa Van Diemen. All right. <laughs> Good evening, Toastmasters. So grateful to be here with you this evening. And what do you think about that statement? That you, each of you, could become a millionaire in just three easy steps. I hope you're sitting on the edge of your seat because this is not just a phantasmic idea. It can be true and a reality for you. Perhaps you have heard of the book, The Millionaire Next Door. It was written by Thomas Stanley and William Danko. They conducted a study of prolific millionaires in the United States. And they found that millionaires are not what the stereotype might portray them to be. Many people have written about finances, such as Dave Ramsey, Susan Orman, and Trent Ham. Trent Ham actually boiled down this book, how, The Millionaire Next Door, into an article called How to Become the Millionaire Next Door. So I have three easy steps for all of you to follow so that you can become a millionaire as well. Are you ready to hear what they are? Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so number one, be frugal. Number two, get a solid, strong financial foundation. And three, identify and set goals. Now let's break that down because that just seems too simple. That's just too easy, right? Well, number one, be frugal. Having wealth isn't what you spend. Having wealth is what you hold on to. It's what you have in the bank. It's your investments. It's um, your assets. So being frugal, um, I encourage you to read some ways to do that. You can look up the Dave Ramsey Financial Peace University. They have great suggestions in there. But basically what Dave Ramsey says is to spend less than you make, then save and invest the difference. So once you are spending less than you make, some of us may have a difficult time depending on our income, our expenses, I found that though going through that course, I was able to find money and basically give myself a raise. I find money in my budget, see where things were kind of slipping out that I didn't know, realize I was um, letting go of. So once I named every dollar that came in and told it where to go, in its essence, I felt like I gave myself a raise and I was able to pay down my debts faster. So. Paying down debt, that brings us to number two. Get a strong financial, solid foundation. So get a solid, strong financial foundation. How do you do that? Well, like I said, you pay off your debt, you save for retirement, and you work towards your financial freedom. So one quick tip to pay down debt is make a list of all the debts that you have and put them in order of the smallest balance first. When you pay off that small, smallest balance first, oh, you are gonna get excited. You are gonna get that energy and you're like, oh, I am making progress, let's do this. And you then apply the amount that you are making to that debt to the next one. So that you are actually, if you're paying the minimum balances on the others, say this debt was $50 a month and this one was 35. Once you've paid off this first one, you add that $50 to that 35. So now you're making an $85 minimum 
payment to that next debt and it's going to go down even faster. And just the excitement of seeing your success is going to just keep you motivated and moving forward. So once you have that done, you can start saving more, perhaps, in you, if you'd like, in your retirement, college, other things, that, depending on your family and your situation. Goal number three, identify and set goals. Now, I just mentioned your family and your personal situation. Everybody's in a different place. Where I was five and 10 years ago is not where I am today. However, I said, where do I want to be in five years financially? Where do I want to be in 10 years? And I started making SMART goals. We talk about SMART goals in Toastmasters. They're measurable. They are timely. They are actionable. And these goals are something that you can identify and work towards on a daily basis. So say in five years, I want to be a director in my profession. And right now I'm an assistant director. So I have um, put out there on my list, on my goals that in by next year, I want to Right now I'm an associate. I wanna be an assistant director and then I wanna move up to a director. So I have put those down on, with a timeline, with a date. By this date, I am going to have this title with this income. And then for the next three and the five years. So knowing that I am working towards that, I am going to do the things on the daily basis that. A, I know that an assistant director would do so that I'm in an associate position, but I'm going to act as an assistant so that those around me can see, hey, this person needs to move up because she's doing what needs to be done. So I just encourage you to make those types of goals. Where do you want to be in five to 10 years? Um, establish what will help you get there and then work on a daily basis to make your way to the life you wanna live in five and 10 years. Along the way, you will be creating the life you want plus working towards becoming a millionaire with your financial goals. So in conclusion, will you join me in becoming a millionaire? It is simple. Remember, there's only three easy steps. One, be frugal. Two, have a, create a solid, strong financial foundation. Three, identify set goals. And then just implement them. I appreciate you listening and have a great evening. <laughs> <laughs> Alyssa, what a fantastic speech you gave to us this evening. This was from a project where you deliver a speech then you get feedback and then you revise that speech, incorporating some of the suggestions that you take to heart that you think might be improvements. So you use the word of the day, make sure you use the word of the day next time you deliver the speech, whatever that word is. I liked your introduction that our Toastmaster John Morse delivered. That's part of your authority to speak. It's why we should listen to you. I love the title of your speech, A Millionaire and Three Easy Lessons. The background was very creative and easy to see. You weren't enmeshed in all kinds of different things that might be distracting from us. The, you did use notes, and I think that what happens in the Zoom environment is you avert your eyes a little bit as you're checking your notes. I don't think you use, need to use the notes as much for this speech as maybe you think you do. Your facial expressions are great. Your face actually speaks volumes, and it connects you further to your audience. I like that you use the rule of three. You use the rule of three about being frugal and getting financial uh, in acumen and setting goals. You use pauses, and uh, one of the areas of opportunity, I think, in the Zoom environment is to make sure you gesture higher so that you're in the screen uh, so that we can see those gestures. I liked the uh, fact that you told the money where to go. Uh, you had a very good use of gestures, such as when you talked about the smallest balance and you talked about uh, how to do something that was very well done. 
you uh, did mention that goal three was setting goals. And I thought, that, well, that seems a little redundant. Maybe you might want to use a synonym for, for goal setting. You slowed down when it was time to explain goals. That was really, really well done. You talked in specificities about being an associate and then being an assistant and then moving to director. You used the wrap-up function. You talked about what you had spoken about in a summary fashion. That was very, very well done. So in, in summary, you excelled at being a confident storyteller. You also could work on maybe moving beyond the notes. I don't think you need them quite as much as you maybe think that you do. And you also, to challenge yourself, I would just embrace the fact that you already are a fairly polished speaker. When I got together with Alyssa beforehand via texting, I said, well, what do you want me to look for? She said, I want to deliver at workshops and conferences, and I want to know what do I have to do to be speaker worthy. Uh, we can put it to a vote, but I think you already are speaker worthy. And that was in evidence tonight. Well done.